Hello, hello. I am checking in here. We'll give a little bit of time, see if anybody shows up. But hello, this is Susan. Welcome to my channel and my Wednesday afternoon lives. And I am prepping the final few things so that I am set to make a whole bunch of napkin backgrounds. And wherever you are, I hope you are having a good day or a good night. Do check in and say hi if you're working along. I know it's hard sometimes to chat. I watch a lot of videos and I don't get the chance to, to comment because my hands are usually sticky and painty and all that good stuff. But what I have been in studio cleanout mode lately. And I mean, we're not talking about just cleaning off my desk and organizing. I'm taking everything off the shelves, taking another good look at it, trying to decide is it something that I'm going to use or is it something that, you know, for, for something that I just don't do anymore. And if you saw one of my recent videos about all the tag bases that I found in journal card bases, I had been saving packaging for years. And every time I opened another cabinet, I found more. And so I finally just took a, uh, I took about, I don't know, a week and a half and I uh, covered it all because I had been saving it. Some of it had been cut into shape. Some of it had book page text on one side, but you could still see the packaging stuff on the other side. So I just sort of went through everything and prepped it as a complete base. So one side is book text, one side is blank text, and they're cut into various tag shapes and journaling card shapes. And then I counted them up and I had over 2,500 of them. So that is, um, that's a quick little hoard video if you want to take a look at it. And I think I might have to do some more what I've been hoarding videos, but it is a cautionary tale to use up your stuff. So one of the other things I found when I was cleaning out one of the cabinets is I had one cabinet where the shelves were kind of deep. So if I put something in it, it slid all the way to the back and I thought, oh, well, that's a good place to store stuff right in the back, which is silly because, of course, then I couldn't find anything. I, I couldn't remember what I even had back there. So I took everything out of that cabinet. And one of the things I had back there was a bunch of these napkins in six different shades of green. And they were in shades of green because... Years ago, I used to teach poetry in juvenile detention centers, and one of the, the culmination of the project, I would go from center to center and group to group, even within the same center, and they would, uh, I would have them for six to eight weeks, and then they would write poems, and then we would do an art project. And napkins was a really easy thing to, you know, glue napkins and then glue their poems on them and various stuff like that. Well. Uh, had to be very careful because I was working in a area that was really filled with a lot of gangs. So there were a lot of colors that we couldn't use. And so green, green was safe. Green was no gang color. And gee, it just happened to be one of my favorite colors. So anyways, long story short, I bought a ton of green napkins um, <laughs> and used hardly a fraction of them because I just never think about that. It's the same thing like I think, oh, well, this big piece of furniture will fit in this room, and, you know, it really doesn't. So I have determined that I will use them up, and I'm glad they're, they're pink, they're green and not pink because I don't use a lot of pink. Pink would be more of an accent, but I use a lot of green. So what I decided to do after gluing napkins on some things last week is because I'm still using up tons of Mod Podge and Tacky Glue and I'm using it up by watering it down and using it to just glue down base layers of things, is that I'm going to start making a lot of bases, backgrounds, master boards, serendipity papers, <clears throat> whatever you want to call them. But basically I'm going to work in tones so that I will have a lot of pages that... Um, that I can then, when I, because I've got a bunch of journals, the, the books are covered with fabric and a lot of journals that I want to get started on. <clears throat> so I thought, well, I don't want to go too deep. If I make too many, I was talking with uh, somebody else about this on another video about how uh, if I make too many make aheads, I'm bored with them by the time I get ready to do the journal. So I don't want to complete them, but I want to get a lot of bases done. And then when I'm working on things that are green, I will have all these green bases that then I can build upon. 
And somebody that does a lot of that is uh, Annelies in Sweden. Oh, those of you that were here last week, if you want to see this stuff all dried that we had done. So these guys came out nice. Um, you know, they did have the plastic you feel, which is not my most favorite thing in the world, but it's nice and durable. These would be good uh, journal covers for like traveler's notebooks. I'll get the butterflies. Hey, Shelby. Serendipity paper is what years ago we used to call what they're calling now master boards or Franken papers or collaged backgrounds. And basically the idea is just taking all your scraps and gluing them down on something and then either using it as it is or continuing to build up on it or cut it apart and do other things with it. So it's just another name for collage backgrounds. And I like serendipity papers best. That's like my favorite name of it. The polka dots came out really neat. I like this. So I'm not going to do a bunch more in this just because the plastic feel isn't me but they, these would be cut down would be really good tags as well and then you could cover them with something else so those came out cool the little index cards came out cool and i mean i have so many of these green napkins you would not believe how is the lighting today i oh wow we just got a dark thing interesting i don't know why oh I do know why. Silly me. Okay. Because I blocked my own light. There we go. That should be a little better. I am really messing with lighting, trying to figure out how to not have it so washed out. And this is just on a piece of cardboard, so I can cut that apart for tags. But the envelopes, I love the way the envelopes came out. Oh, those guys are so great. So I could decorate that. I could... Uh, just to stress the back of it, I could glue this into a book like this and have a flip. I could do it this way in a book. I just, I love the dogs. The daisies, this is my favorite. Somehow the wrinkles just seem to really, the light is good. Okay, good. I, I'm kind of getting the feeling that maybe what I'm seeing on my computer screen is not what you guys are seeing. I'm not sure. I like this one and the hedgehogs. Okay, that came out really cute. So I haven't done anything with these yet, but I was just glad to do them and kind of get, get an idea. All right, so let's get these guys out of the way. I've been doing a lot of experiments, and so I think what I'm going to do probably um, the next few lives is I will kind of show you how I'm building on these. So here's one that I did. Let's get a simple background. Okay, this is just using my green napkins, and this was just on a piece of um, scrap white cardstock that I had. All right, how am I crooked? That's interesting. Okay, hopefully, don't get dizzy. I'm going to try and turn the camera just a little. So this was just, you know, scraps of the napkin glued down, and it's just, it's just a base. And it's fine like that. I mean, it would actually be a really cute little journal cover. It's got a nice texture. It doesn't feel quite as plasticky as some of the other ones, I have no idea why. But then what you can see is, then I can take fabric in shades of green. This is some interesting netting in green. So some of my shears, you know how much I love my shears. Some other paper, some fibers. So then you can start building on top of this and cut it apart and make pockets or journal cards or journal covers if you're doing a whole thing like that. So that's kind of what I think. And then of course you've got sprays you can do, you can do inks, you can do stencils. So um, that's kind of where I'm headed. And I wanna get a lot of these bases done because I want to use up these green napkins, which is just kind of crazy. And so what I think I'm gonna do is I've got this cheap sketch pad paper, it's got a, a nice weight to it and I'm not worried about buckling paper because I know I can put these under books and I know that I'm going to be sewing on them when they're all to a certain point wow and now it's dark here again interesting I don't know lighting to me is the most frustrating part 
of doing videos. It just got really dark. Hey, Nettie, I'm doing good today. I'm uh, I'm not accomplishing as much with my big clean out as I thought quite as fast as I wanted to, but that's okay because I'm really getting to re-know my materials and feel, so now it's like really dark in here. My screen is like super dark, but that's okay. All right, I'm gonna be okay. So I, I brought one thing of, I have a whole bunch of this poster board, because again, I used to use this when I was teaching. I've got some fluorescent colors, but I had some white. So I think I wanna do one in white, or one with a white with the greens, because that'll be a good journal cover. And then I've got some book text. And what I discovered the other day, let's see, we're gonna save the big one aside. All right. This is gonna be really interesting. Let's see if I can spread all these out so I have my choices. I'm not gonna do this liquidy stuff first. I think I'm gonna start with glue sticks. Hi, Mary. How are you all doing today? I hope everybody is having an awesome day. I thought I was prepped. Ha, 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 ha. All right, let's see how this works. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to work with glue sticks to start to get that first layer down. And then I can come back over when I get a few of them done. Then I can um, come back over it with my thicker glue. All right, is it like dark as night for you guys now? Did it go dark? Did the screen go dark? Because if it did, I don't know why. I have my overhead lights on. I have my three lights around me. Maybe I should put serendipity paper in the title of this video instead of just decoupaging napkins. Old timers will remember that. And the hardest thing for me, of course, is thinking way too much. Wow. Why would it go dark? Yeah, you guys will have to let me know. If it's not dark on your side, then I can keep working. and I just won't look at my computer because it is like some summer sunshine bright <clears throat> on my screen. Light's still all good. Okay. This is bizarre. Oh, I need to find a lighting expert. I probably need like a college kid that's majoring in whatever studio production stuff is. I just want to get one of each color and see how that's going to. You know, the making room, it's re it's a real struggle. Um, when I finish this, of course, my desk will be covered with stuff. And then I will slide it all off into a tub and save it for working on later. <clears throat> and all over my living room floor, thank you to my indulgent husband, are tubs of stuff that I'm sorting. But I'm being really good about sorting. I'm being really ruthless about putting stuff aside in the to sell box. I'm not going to be ready to start putting physical items in the shop probably for another month because I am literally, I'm taking everything off of the shelves. All right. So definitely that would be enough. Okay. So it's just something here. This is bizarre. So maybe it's my computer. All right. All I want to do is hold it down. Okay. By doing the glue stick first, it does help get it a little bit flatter, but I'm not going to worry. You know, it's not like this has to be perfect because this is just a base layers. I just want to get the tones of green, but I figured I would be less likely to make a big mess if I did the glue stick layer first. And I experimented with that yesterday. I did one layer with doing glue stick and then doing the real liquidy stuff over the top and one where I did liquid both sides and it was fine. And I'm only worried about straight edges as I get up to the builder layer. Yeah, so I, it's crazy. And so as I'm discovering all these things in the studio, you know, which is good, and I'm deciding to get rid of things, what does this crazy lady do? I go to eBay and go shopping for more stuff, right? Is that nuts? I know it is. But I think it's because... Right now, you know, we can't go hit the thrift stores, so we kind of have that shopping urge. So 
So I did score a few really nice old foreign books on eBay and they're, they've got a lot of pages. So I will definitely be able to put some of them in my packs to sell. How optimistic I am. I have such a huge stack of my plastic things here. I must really think I'm going to get far. It's okay. We have had the weirdest weather here. Uh, we had like a lot of rain for a few days, which was bizarre. I mean, we do get rain at this time of year, but I mean, this was pretty intense rain. I think we got a couple inches across a week, which was really nice since we've got fire season is around the corner. All right, I'm just gonna tear some of this. And then we had a really hot day. Now it's it's pretty windy, but it's uh, it's not warm. I want just good old spring weather. I want weather where I can go work outside and not want to come back inside as soon as I walk out because it's so hot and sweaty. I don't do the heat well. I do cold a lot better than the heat. All right, now tear some of this. Hello, Eli and Eden. Yeah, Mary, they're napkins. I found a humongous stash of green napkins from when I was teaching and I had to be careful what colors I used in the classroom because of the gangs. So I just want to do a whole lot of base layers. You know what I'm going to end up, I did not make a place for is all these little scraps. Let's see if I can just toss them out of the way. And I mean, it, it's a ridiculous amount. I know if I get the really liquidy stuff out now, I'm going to, I'm going to make a huge mess. Uh, so I'm just going to work in tones on these layers to get started. And then over the next, you know, few sessions either i'll do them live or i'll do them as craft with me's i will keep building up the layers of green uh, let's see and we're just going to do you know i could have just done a whole napkin on the bottom okay that's what i'll do the next time I will just let's get. Yeah, green is my favorite color, so it definitely works for me to be able to have all these different colors of green to play with. All right, I know what I'm going to do different on the next one. And I'm not following a lot of, you know, my normal collage rules that I might do because, again, this is a base layer. If I was doing a torn paper collage picture, I might be a little more paying a, a little bit more attention to something. But I do like one piece touching another, not something just floating. So that needs to be grounded with something else. And, again, you might not even see any of this because I don't know what's going to happen when I when I keep building up my layers. All right. I probably should at least do one where I do all the liquid stuff first. Let's do that. Should I, should I come back? Let's do like five and we get five of them glued down with a glue stick. Then I'll come back in. That's a nice skin. Uh, I 
I've got to get back to working on some of the digital kits that I have. Let's see. Let's do dark on the bottom. These are the cocktail size napkins. So, I mean, I can already picture, I've got, oh, I found a shoebox full of the dried moss, which will be awesome to use too. Oh, there we go. That'll make this even quicker. And I think then what I'll do is when I start doing the liquid stuff, then I can pile pieces on top. Let's see. So it was fun when I shared my video about hoarding all my bases to discover that it wasn't just me. There are a great many of us hoarding bases of things or hoarding supplies. <clears throat> Something else I have a lot of and I just can't bear to get rid of. I have inherited my, my grandmother and my husband's grandmother's um, a lot of things from their sewing rooms, their old sewing rooms. And so it's a lot of the beautiful old threads that really you can't sew much with them now because they, they're so old they break. But they're on those beautiful wood spools. <clears throat> I don't make dolls. I don't make usually 3D things. I have so many fibers that I can't imagine, you know, spooling them all up. They would take up a lot more room. So I don't know. I may have to try and sell some of those. But I have three shoe boxes full of spools. How nuts is that? Uh, that's the problem with working with the big ones is... That's not too bad. Oh, good. I hit every edge. That's what I wanted. Oh, thank you, Eli and Eden. Yeah, I, <laughs> it, it was really kind of eye-opening to me to see how much I had been holding on to, which is why I really, I think my very first organizational tip for anybody that's trying to, like, you know, figure out what to do next because I have so much that I literally, it was stopping me from figuring out what to work on is to get like things together. And we did that when we moved from our big house and we knew we were going to be downsizing. We didn't have a place to move to yet, but we knew we wanted a much smaller house. And I did that when we were moving, I went through the house upstairs, downstairs, the garage, the storage, and I gathered everything that, you know, was similar. So like, for example, candlesticks, you know, and you think, well, you use the same few candlesticks every time you entertain. You know, maybe I had like three or four sets that I like to use. And I got them out on the dining room table and I had something like 20 sets of candlesticks. <laughs> this is nuts. We don't even entertain that much. And we certainly don't do, you know, fancy candlelit dinners very often. So it was easy then to look at that, pick my favorites and get rid of them. And I did that with all the stuff, you know, as we were going through stuff. I collect cobalt blue glass. I did not get rid of much of that, but for everything else, just gathering everything together and saying, okay, I have, you know, seven serving platters. We do not have humongous gatherings where we need all these different serving platters. I can get rid of some of them. So you do the same thing with your craft supplies, you know, my glues. Um, I did a, a video not long ago on my favorite glues to use. And the reason I did that is because I had some glues that I really didn't like and I kept finding more of it and I didn't want more of the glue. Um, I'm not a, uh, I, I don't use a lot of Mod Podge and I'm trying to use it all up. Uh, I don't use tacky glue anymore, Aileen's tacky glue anymore because it's just too hard on my hands. And I kept finding these things of glue. So get your like things together and it makes it so much easier. Well, Nettie, when I first got started, I didn't have a lot either. I mean, we all start somewhere. And, and you also, when you first get started, you save a lot. You save everything because you don't know what it is that's going to interest you. Okay, I know this looks really boring right now, but I have to remind you, we're going to put 
layers on top of that. And then later we'll do layers on top of that. So this is just a background of greens tones. That's all I want to do. <clears throat> I mean, I saved, what did I say? I saved every, we used to eat a lot of graham crackers and they are a great size box for making journals. I save so many of those. There's probably, I don't think I'm exaggerating if I say there's 50 of those in the garage. I still wasn't able to get rid of them because I keep thinking, you know, those are useful. Um, junk mail. <laughs> you know, and my trouble is too, I'm, I'm like an impulse buyer when I go to the grocery store. Okay, I don't do the grocery shopping, but um, years ago I did when my kids were little, but now my husband does it all. Uh, even pre-COVID, he did all the shopping. But, you know, I'm one of these people that would go to the grocery store and I would see all those things at the end of the aisles. And, yeah, I'd throw them in my cart. I was as bad as my little kids, you know, going around saying, I want this, I want this, I want that. And, and I should save those security envelopes. And then I realize, okay, I've, I've used them a few times. I, I have some plans to use some more, but I probably don't need, again, several shoeboxes full of them. So I am... Um, and it could be age, you know, if I was in my twenties and thirties and had the energy that I had back then to create, you know, I was doing different kinds of things back then. And I, of course I was writing, you know, so then I, I could save more because I would work faster, but at my age now, I don't work that fast and I don't know. I just want to walk into my studio, look at my shelves and be so happy with everything I see. Like one of the things I did is I pulled out all my books that I use in journals. Ah, big old glue booger there. That's not good. I pulled out all my books and then I um, sorted them because I didn't realize I had not kept them set, you know, over the time as you use them, you know, everything just kind of comes out, it becomes like our desk, you know, you have everything out. So I had all these books off the shelves and I just kind of tossed them, some of them on the shelves in the living room, some of them on the shelves in the entry hall, some of them on the shelves in the studio. And then I realized, okay, I have my copyright free books and you know, my books that are out of copyright mixed in with my reading books, mixed in with my husband's cookbooks, mixed in with the books that I cut apart. So I spent a day taking all of my books that I use for art off the shelves and sorting through those. And now my studio actually has, one of the bookcases is actually used for books, novel idea, right? I had so many supplies on them that I couldn't even put my books on the bookcase. Also, normally if I was collaging um, on top layers, I would not be probably using this little area where it's all crimped. But again, it's a base layer. I'm not gonna worry about it. What do I have my paper on? Do you mean these plastic things? These are called cutting mats at my local Dollar Tree here in California. And they sell them, they come in a two pack over in the kitchen aisle for a buck. And I have discovered they, they're, um, I don't know if they're a real silicone or if they're plastic. I don't have any of the packaging anymore, but they are awesome for gluing on. I can stain on them. I can do a lot of things and they, they don't stick to each other, so then I can stack things on them to, to dry for a long time. Nettie, I would say that the one of the most, the best investments that I made recently for myself was, um, I have a guillotine cutter and I have several of those little sliding color cutters, but I bought the uh, Fiskars bypass cutter so, you know, granted, you know, you can only do things that fit in that space in there, but I love it. It's been a game changer for me, an absolute game changer. You know, and I was kind of trying to get to that point on the scraps because, geez, they just keep, they, they just keep growing. They really do. They just keep growing. And it's like, Okay, before I did this, if I had wanted to do something like this, I would have had to sort through a bunch of piles to find all my greens. And now what I'm doing is the overflow 
can be sorted in the, the bigger containers, but then I want to have small shoe boxes with all my green stuff in it and all my um, blue, the colors I go to mostly, greens, browns, earth tones. Let's see, let's do one where the entire base is this. Two, three. Sorry, checking up here on Skip. How do you organize your scraps, Nettie? Do you have them in plastic bags? I like to do that. And of course, you know, I haven't even tackled the fabric yet, people. I mean, if you saw the video I posted yesterday was um, the haul of all the linens and lace that my friend sent me. And, you know, I'm dying to get into the fabric closet and because all my, my uh, linens and doilies and lace is behind a bunch of tubs in the fabric closet. So I really want to get in there next, but I can't do that. I'm let my, telling myself it's, it'll be my reward for getting the rest of the studio done. Because now that she sent me such an abundance of riches, now I can go through and be picky about what I decide I want to keep. I don't have to keep everything just because I have it. I can, you know, really look at it again, you know, say, well, does this, you know, apply the, you know, spark joy. I mean, there's some pieces of fabric I pick up and it just makes me so happy. So happy to have that fabric and other, I'm just kind of, eh. And same thing with the lace. So I'm, I'm looking forward to applying this, uh, light things together <clears throat> to the fabrics and trims. And I keep finding, you know, every time I open another box in the studio, it's like, oh, this is where I put a bunch of that stuff when I cleaned off my desk. Because after doing, you know, a big work day or a work week, my desk was filled with stuff. Okay, I'm letting go of the wrinkles. The wrinkles don't matter. Bot base layer. So what's everybody working on? I want to know projects. What kind of projects are you working on? I'm doing this, and I think... For a while, I'll be doing a lot of base layers. I'm doing the studio clean out. I have uh, a journal idea that I'm playing with. I'm just kind of jotting down some template ideas of how I want to approach it. And then I, I'm, I've got to get back to the digi kits because there's a bunch of those that are in various stages. Yeah, I, I love that shoebox side stuff. That just, to be able to organize in shoeboxes and the bookcases um, that I have under my center island are just perfect depth for the shoeboxes. And they're clear so you can see what's in them. I can already picture doing this and then taking my shears on some of them, maybe doing stamping a lot of text maybe over this. That's going to be fun. And I'm using pretty thin paper on, as the background just because as I build up the layers, I don't want it to get, you know, so thick that it's too thick for the book. Oh, you are so lucky that you've got somebody that can do that kind of building for you. That's awesome. Yeah, I found that um, one of the kind of rules of thumb I'm using is if I walk into the studio expecting to find something in a certain place and I can't find it there, then wherever I have it stored, it might not be the best place for it. So I... I've been redoing that. And then in most cases, I already had the storage things that I wanted to use. But in a couple of cases, I have definitely wanted to change how I was storing something. Okay. What do we got here? One. I'm not sure even how long this Oh, it's a half. One, two, three, four. Let's see how many more of these we can do. Like, I love these things. I've got these in a bunch of different sizes because uh, they stack. 
and they um, this is one of the small ones they've gotten bigger longer I've got these all over the place and there um, I have a video about organizing your studio or organizing my studio <clears throat> and there's a link to these on there and I like my shoe boxes <clears throat> some water hey Susie how you doing today Nettie that's what I started off doing too you know you you find your methods and then as your collection grows then you change things around it just um, and it will grow I know you feel right now like you don't have much stuff but it will grow I was lucky to be able to design the studio space here from absolute scratch. And we had been living in the house for a couple of years before we got to my room. And so I had a lot of time to look at different examples of what people did and, you know, how different things worked for them. Sewers and quilters wanted certain things maybe that were tall for them that would be too tall for me because I'm short. And it, then my mother-in-law gave me some bookcases that I just love the looks of. They were wood. And another friend gave me an entertainment center that I just knew when I saw it was going to be perfect for storing paper. And it's just sort of taken a life of its own from that. But I'm glad that I had the time to think about it before we actually did anything. And then I custom ordered the bookcases for my island and had our contractor guy, uh, had our cabinet guy make a tabletop for it that I immediately like within a week of using it I immediately spilled Fabri-Tac on it and ate right through the finish in a couple spots so it looked well worn right away Yeah, you should do a tour. Absolutely. People love those sorts of things. I have a playlist of studio tours. I need to go look at some new ones and add to the playlist because we all get inspired when we see how other people are keeping their stuff. And even if we don't do things, it's just like, you know, when we're watching art videos, we don't do things in exactly the same way. It sort of trips something in our brain and then we go off and do our own thing with it. All right, I'll do this and then I'll get the liquidy stuff out. so boring right now but really this is all part of the process I always feel like I should have something just earth shattering for you guys to look at but alas that is not the case at least not today okay let's prep these I'm not even going to be that neat. I just want to get the excess off so my glue doesn't run off the edge that much. That's good when we have significant others or family members that can do something like that for them. I have a friend whose dad likes to build her lots of things for her creative space. Of course, a lot of us like to haunt the thrift stores and antique shops for things. And I don't know when I'll ever feel good about doing that again. It might be a while.
it's terrible. I was talking with somebody about um, where I got my napkins and I grabbed the link and I, I shared it with her. And then I went looking at the stuff that the person had for sale. It was a, uh, an eBay seller that I bought from a lot. She's in the uh, Ukraine and she gets the most wonderful napkins and I didn't need anything at all. And then I started gathering things up and I had to stop myself and take them all back out of my cart again. It's like, I don't need any napkins. <laughs> but the temptation when you see the beautiful napkins and she gets, she has ones that just don't, <clears throat> you don't see around here in the States at least. At least I don't because I don't go looking for napkins. They just seem to find me. Oh, what kind of paper I'm using under my napkins. This is just really cheap, really thin sketch pad paper from the dollar store. Uh, I like it because it's a little bit bigger than the eight and a half by 11 that I normally would use. And that way I can, you know, cut things back if I need to. Um, if I was going to be, you know, like I've got poster board that I'll do this on. This one is done on uh, cardstock. It depends on what I'm going to do with it because I know I'm going to build this up. I'm okay with it being thin. All right, let's move. Let's see. Let's think. Okay. This might take a little bit of refining here. Those guys out of the way. And what this is, is just um, whatever glue that I am trying to use up. So right now it is Aileen's Tacky Glue mixed with water. And I don't know, it's probably two parts glue. Ah, should have known that was going to happen, right? Uh, two parts glue to one part water. And the reason I'm pouring it into another thing is every once in a while I seem to get something that's going to bleed, color bleed, and I didn't want to contaminate the rest of my glue. And I just, I'm literally mixing up all my, my glues that I want to use up because it doesn't matter on these, you know, base layers for the serendipity paper. This is definitely going to stick if I don't get my other paper towel and clean that out with some water. And sometimes it's okay for a top layer. It just kind of depends on, you know, I just see how it feels when I get to the end of it all. You don't really use napkins? I don't use them as much as I should considering the collection I have, but I'm trying to make a change on that. <laughs> I found that I was just so attracted to the pictures that I just couldn't let them go and... I gathered up an awful lot of them. All right, we got that out of the way, so hopefully we won't spill any more. Let's see what we can, oh, we still have a mess here. Yeah, this is why I put down these other sheets. These are just Teflon sheets. Um, I think they're like three for 10 or $12. No, not even that, maybe $9.99. Let's try, I want the soft brush, I think, on this. And these little guys are cool. These are actually makeup brushes, but they're just a silicone silicone uh, base, and I like them a lot. All right, first we just want to get everything glued down. And I am embracing the wrinkles, because the nice thing about wrinkles on napkins, you can go over them with your inks. And kind of accent them if you want to. Now, if you are doing something where you really, really want to make sure that you have an absolutely flat napkin, I have a video on how to adhere napkins uh, and so with no wrinkles. And you can watch that. I'll try and remember to link to it um, in the end cards here in the description box. You know, but if that's something that, you know, some people, they really, especially if you're doing like maybe an envelope or something and you want to have no wrinkles on it, it's kind of a fun way to do it. But uh, it takes time because you have to let the base dry. And <clears throat> most of us are impatient. I know I am. Now, 
Now I can do this one of two ways. I can do what I'm going to do on this layer is I'm just going to get all the glue down. I want to make sure that the napkin is completely adhered and I'll let this one dry. And then I'll come back over and add more napkins on top of it. Then the next one I'm going to do a little differently and I will work in small sections. You want a soft brush when you're working with napkins. So I'm not using the silicone brush right now. It's good for spreading the glue, but it does tend to, to rip if you're if you have a heavy hand, and I have a heavy hand with glue. Maria, there's a gal in one of the groups on Facebook. I can't remember her name at all, and if somebody here knows it, please let us know. But she did what I thought was a really good idea, because the same thing is just all these beautiful napkins. She took an old dictionary, and she is making that her napkin journal. I don't know if she removed some of the pages to make room for the, the uh, extra bulk or not. But, you know, the napkins, of course, look so beautiful with the text going through. And I thought that was a great way to use old dictionary. Once upon a time, I was going to do a napkin journal. I was saving aside two of every napkin I got in a special box just to do a napkin journal just so that I could enjoy them all. And then I started my fussy cutting thing. That was crazy. And now I'm just thinking I want to work in, I, I just want to do some journals that are, are around certain tones. And of course, for me, most of that's going to always start with green. You know, something like this base, I'm, I'll probably come in and do some uh, mark making of some kind, either with, you know, some stamps or maybe with my own original mark making things. And I'll do that with some ink or paint and then maybe come back over it with some more napkins. All right, so this one, yes, yeah, yes, it's bad. I fling, I fling these brushes all over the place and then I end up with glue everywhere. Okay, let me let that one go aside. This, oh, okay, this one, let's do this one. This one's gonna be a little, more tricky because I started doing this with a glue stick. So we'll work in sections. Isn't that a great idea? Oh, hi, Lorna. You were here and then you're going to come back again. Okay. Yeah, I some of the pictures just really coming through the words. I, I don't know if I could be picky and think about what word what pictures went on each page. Now, the more I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking I might even, I would probably do it as an altered book. I would take out some of the pages of the dictionary and then go through and glue my napkins on. I was thinking I might actually take everything apart and just do them all in dictionary pages and then rebind it, which would be another thing to do. But I like the idea. It's just, you know, she had an old dictionary. It would actually be good, you know, on a newer dictionary, too. You could, um, something that Sagita does a lot is, uh, she does it with her gesso, but you could certainly do it with your glue, is she adds some coffee to it so it's not going on white or clear. And she does, you know, when she's adhering things with gesso, she gets that color that she wants, and then it's kind of like a glue, that's a colored glue. So you could do some gessoing on your pages and the different, you know, in, an, in a tea dye color and then adhere your napkins to that. You wouldn't have your see-through, but it would give you something different in a variety. I don't know. I'm rambling. I have a little air bubble here because, of course, that's what happens when you do the glue sticks. So I'm just going to get it really saturated and let it dry a little bit, and then I can press it down. And again, I'm not being... A perfectionist. I know it's a shock, right? But I'm not being a perfectionist on these layers because they're on the bottom and you're not going to see everything. You're just going to get the, the feel of the green. This one I'm thinking of, I've got a lot of sprays that have been sitting for a long time. I don't know if, if the sprayers even work anymore. Um, they're not, it was before things like Lindy's even came out. Um, glitter mist, that's what they are. A bunch of glitter mist sprays. And that would be really fun to see uh, if I could get those working. And I have some, I think I have some acrylic sprays too. 
I gotta find a box big enough for a spray booth though, so that I don't spray, since I'm working in the living room, it would be nice to not spray all over my nicely painted walls. Hey, a starving Emma. Ooh, music pages would be good too for napkins. Well, you know, you could take things, take both the music pages and dictionary pages, bind your own journal and then make that your napkin journal. Bind it into something like an old dictionary. This has been a really good, doing all these napkin based kind of things has been a really good way for me to use up this glue. I think I only have five bottles of Aileen's Tacky Glue left. Is that ridiculous? And one bottle of Mod Podge. Then I will be down to just the glues I love to use, which are Fabri-Tac and Art Glitter Glue and glue sticks for certain things which means I'll have more storage space because I won't need to store all the different types of glue and I won't need 20 bottles of my favorite glues on hand all the time. So I think it's going to be a win-win. I'm love I have this huge pile of empty storage things in our entry hall. I got to find room for them in the garage because of all this clean out I've been doing. It's it's terrific. I have space on the shelves. I have empty storage containers. But I, you know, the dog is, you know, 75 pounds of dog trying to navigate around all these piles. It's like we just moved in with the mess everywhere. Oh, that sounds beautiful. Code book. What is a code book? What would they use a code book for? I think any kind of an antique book that you just love just to turn the pages of. Um, napkins are also great if you have those brittle pages that, you know, as soon as you fold them, like to use them in a signature, they crack, you know, put a napkin over them and you've strengthened your page and then you've got that beautiful text to look at. Ah. <laughs> I forgot to put my invisible gloves on so that my fingers wouldn't stick to the napkin. So I've got to be careful not to not to touch the gluey parts because I have been known to pull the whole thing right off because I <clears throat> stick it sticks to my fingers. And I just want it all to dry right away so I can see because of course when it's at the stage where it's got the glue all over it and it looks all white I'm like oh gosh Whose bright idea was this? You know, this this is not what I had in my head. But it's the most wonderful thing about so many types of art is the layers. And watching something, you know, come to life in the various layers. We watch a, a TV show. We just finished the most recent season called um, Portrait Artist of the Year, or sometimes it's Landscape Artist of the Year. It's a UK series where these artists do some amazing things in a short amount of time. A little hole right there. And I just love watching their things come to life. I don't even care that that's a straight edge right there. Um, you know, in, in three or four hours that they have to paint and they start off with a sketch and, or somebody has got like a red background and then suddenly, you know, this beautiful picture comes to life that has hardly any red in it at all, but the, the underpaintings and that's, that's what this is. It's just an underpainting for collage. All right. No really big air bubbles. Oh, thanks for the shout out for the thumbs up. I appreciate that. Y'all know the thumbs up always makes me smile when I come back later. <clears throat> okay. Let's see what we can add to this while we glue it down. That's a goober. We don't need that goober. I did bring one pattern. Okay, I'll do one 
I found a bunch of fern napkins that I don't know why I cut apart the way I cut apart, but we'll do them. We'll do one of those with them. So does anybody have a particular process that lately they have, you know, just kind of fallen in love with something you find yourself doing over and over again? I mean, like right now I seem to be doing a lot of stuff with napkins <laughs> and what I'm dying to do is a lot of, uh, I've got a lot of papers I want to color, get color on. So that's, I know that's what's going to come up next. What have, what have you guys been obsessing over lately? <clears throat> Hydration time. Oh, literally the city code. Sorry, just scrolling back up here on the chat. That could be really pretty through the napkins. Especially with numbers. Oh, numbers can be so cool. That's the same color. We don't want to do that. Let's put it right here. Fussy cutting. <laughs> uh, I just packed up, I don't know, probably 10 years worth of magazine images, most of which were fussy cut because they just don't work well in the journals that I'm doing now. And I have an art teacher friend that can use them. So now all I have left is all my fussy cut napkins, of which there are many. <laughs> Does your hand kill you at the end of the night when you're doing all of that? I've got a bum shoulder, so it, it doesn't like fussy cutting nearly as much. Oh, Nettie, that's great. You're going to be obsessed with sewing on paper now. Maria, I guess that's probably what I've been doing is going from obsession to obsession. I try to work in the studio clean out during the day while my husband's working here at home. And then since I've got the other half of the studio is in the living room, I can work in here on cleaning and sorting and organizing things while we watch TV in the evenings. And so I'm obsessively cleaning and sorting as well as gluing. And yesterday I did a whole bunch of different experiments that, um, I can't wait to share with you guys. Emma, yep, I know. I've been there. That's why my hoarding, you know, cautionary tale video came about is because I could not get rid of anything. So I am starting to look at the possibility of buying a die cut embossing machine. Uh, right now I've just got a few embossing folders that I'm playing around with and I just do them uh, with the rolling pin. But I'm thinking I want to get a machine and because I've got a bum shoulder, I'm thinking I want to get an electric one. So one friend told me that the Gemini had the best reviews if you have a die cut slash embossing machine, what do you have? And do you have an electric one? And what do you think about it? Let me know. And if you're watching this later, let me know in the comments because um, the Gemini is about $175, I think, because or the top of the line one, because it would do uh, up to A4 paper. And I'm trying to decide if there is a reason that I would want to do something that large or if one of the smaller ones would be okay for me. 
but I do want to have electric because I'm not getting any younger and my strength is not going <laughs> not going to be any better over time. Lots of hummingbirds here <laughs> going from project to project. Oh, that's the other thing I wanted to show you guys. Shoot. Let me see if I can reach these while I'm doing this. Ah, I can. All right. Speaking of hummingbirds, I have got, these are postcard size, but they're completely blank on the other side. Um, these are two photographs of mine. So they are postcard size. I have got two boxes of those. Um, because of a mishap that a printer did years ago because um, they were supposed to have like my name and address on them and I was putting them in packages of things I was selling. What else can I do with those besides sticking them in every thing that goes out, every piece of mail that leaves the house, anything that I sell, happy mail, that kind of stuff. But what else can I do with those things? There are so many of them. Carla, how are you? Terry, you've got the manual physics. Yeah, I kind of, I just think I'm past the time of doing the manual stuff. I'm good. I am, I am still in clean it out, use it up mode. I found huge piles of plain green napkins. So I am just doing some bases that are green tones. So then I can build them up with other stuff. And I'm going back to the name serendipity paper. I like that a lot better than masterboard, which everybody's using now or Franken paper. Although I guess they're only calling it Franken paper when you sew it. I don't know all these different names for the same things. I was telling people earlier, Carla, every time I open a, a drawer or a cabinet, I find something that I forgot I had. How did your um, National Collage Day thing go, Carla? Was it good? Hopefully you got a lot of viewers. Uh, different color, different color. Let's see. At least I remembered to separate all of these before I came on. I know there's so many UFOs, aren't there? I mean, they just, they're, they're gremlins that multiply while we sleep. But I'm feeling like, not that I have a handle on it, but that I have a plan to get a handle on it, if that makes sense. You know, and every time I either finish something or toss it out or put it in my giveaway box or my sell box, it just, I just lie out this huge sigh. It's like, yes, oh, awesome. This, that, that, that aspect is done. Now I can move on to something else. You know, and, and we forget that, you know, our, I, our ideas change that we just have um, a lot of interest and something that obsesses us at one time down the road is not going to be nearly as obsessive. You have the Cricut Maker. Is yours electric, Mary, or is yours manual? It will cut wood. It would cut fabric. Oh, my goodness. Something that would cut fabric would be good, too. I don't need the scan and cut. I just want something that will, I want to use some die cuts and I want to use some embossing folders. And if I could use it with fabric would be really nice too. Uh, hey, Nancy. Yes, you caught me. I'm going to be here for a little while. Terry, it's a good point. You know, um, that kind of, I was going to ask one of my friends that said that she, that she really wanted the larger one. I'm not sure 
that for the kind of stuff that I'm doing and that I'm interested in doing, that I need a larger one. I mean, if I had, okay, an A4 thing, that would do one journal cover, but I don't imagine that I would emboss front and back of a journal cover. Mostly I would be likely to emboss a five by seven something and then build it up as a mixed media cover. So the only thing I know for sure is that I, I definitely want it to be an electric one. Carla, I've came to the same realization. Um, I actually started taking pieces of furniture out of the studio because there was just too much of it. And uh, the more I could see some places, you know, for your eye to rest, like they tell you when you're, when you're doing art, you know, you don't want to fill up everything. You want to have a place for your eye to rest. I want the same kind of thing in the studio. Being able to have my books, it was a little thing, have my books stacked upright like books would normally go on a bookshelf rather than stacked on top of each other because I just didn't have enough room for them made a big difference psychologically. And I want to be happy when I walk in my room. And I'm setting up a, a second, or I guess it's a third art space in the garage. And uh, I had to think about, you know, what all I really want to have out there. I have a long table. I have a door over a couple of cabinets. And it's a long work surface, but... I'm thinking I can put like the embossing machine can live out there or die cut machine or whatever you call them can live out there. And I have a laminator. It can live out there and my stuff for waxing can live out there. So Mary, yours is electric. Okay. Circuit cricket maker. That's electric. Yeah, I don't know. I can't picture embossing the front and back of something. Maybe I would. I'll have to think on that. Uh, let's see. Where do we want to build this up? Just a little bit. Attach that. See, I'm so heavy with glue. Look at how much the glue is almost gone. Oh, you can't see. The glue is almost gone in there. <clears throat> but it's good. It's a good way to use up the, the stuff. Carla, that's the other thing I realized is I did not leave room in the studio for finished projects. Why would we not do that? You know, yeah, it makes me happy to see the stuff that I've made and, you know, wanted to keep for myself that I didn't make and sell. And I have no place for it. So I'm glad that you did that. I'm, I definitely am, am heading in that direction. I'm just not there yet. Hey, Aaron. You know, I was just looking at the Vagabond as well. Um, so it's a quality build. Yeah, I have to look at the folders here and, and decide, do I really need something that big? I don't know if I need to do one that big. I would probably rationalize buy it, buying it sooner if I was buying something like the Vagabond 2 as opposed to the $175 one. All right. I think this is this is okay for this layer. It might need more down the road. <clears throat> uh, okay, this one, where are my ferns? <laughs> it's like this balancing act around here. All right, I think that's what I'm going to do with this. I found these were from some kind of napkins, and I was in my fussy cutting mode. And, of course, you know, you couldn't fussy cut these to that degree. So I don't know what I thought I was going to do with these, but let's see if we can use them up on this one. Nettie, having a special place to dye paper makes a big difference. Um, kind of why I started this, the cleanup mode is because normally I would dye papers 
on the island in the studio if I'm not working outside. And, you know, I can't even see the top of the island in the studio, so I can't do that. And I've got to clean off the outside studio as well. Um, it's been too cold to work out there lately, but since I do my eco dyeing out there and my creating my plant dyes out there, I need to do that. And although we don't have a puppy, anything fabric on the floor is fair game for Zoe. She just, she is enthralled with fab fabric. I mean, she just loves it. Sometimes I have to wash stuff a second time, you know, if I've made the mistake of leaving it on the floor because she will just curl up and I could give her something. I could give her a piece of fabric this big and tell her it's hers and she will pounce on it like, you know, it was this huge blanket. And I mean, she loves it. She'll, so I basically, when I would come home from thrift shopping before I washed everything, I would put the big pile on the floor and she was just an absolute bliss with that. And then, uh, now, with all this clean out mode, I have to every so often pull out something like some polyester stuff that I'm probably not going to use for anything but a lining. And I'll throw it on the floor and tell her it's hers. And she's just like in heaven. It does make you want to stay more organized, though, if you have a critter that wants to crawl and everything. And people with cats, I don't know how you did it. I've had one cat in my life, and I wasn't doing art then. Um, and I know that he would have been, he would have been in everything. I would have, I would have probably cried a lot if I had a cat and was trying to art. One shelf in the main room for your journals, Maria. That's good. I'm thinking because the sunroom, when we finally get it done, whenever we can have construction workers here again. Um, oh, going to sneeze. Uh, I'm thinking that's probably going to be where my business desk is going to land. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, <clears throat> that might be where I can put some of my finished projects out there. But if I would use up more of my stuff, I'll have more room in the studio for showcasing. Ah, well, our, we don't have, I don't have any doors in the studio. Everything is wide open. So it would not work with a cat. Yeah, my eco dyeing I only do outside as well. Um, although I have an area set up in the garage because I bought this big old turkey roaster at Goodwill. And I can use that for some additional stuff. I get nervous. I see people doing eco dyeing and they're doing it in their kitchen on their stove. And it makes me so nervous for them because so many of the plants um, will put out toxic materials. All right, let's just build this up a little bit. <clears throat> And again, this is all going to be cut apart or built upon, so I'm not, I don't have to be perfect. I just need to use this stuff up. I mean, it's a huge stack of these ferns. What did I think I was going to do with them? I have no idea. Oh, thanks, Aaron. <laughs> the wind is blowing so crazy here today, and even with all the doors and windows shut, the allergies are just, ugh. It's been quite the allergy season. All right, let's get the glue down on these and then take a look. Yeah, I'm thinking I might do like a layer of um, paint, transparent paint over the top of this. I might do some sprays. I could do some micas. We are embracing the wrinkles. It's all texture. Maybe I should do one set of the ferns as the base because they'll be different going through. There's like a hint of blue in them. But they'd be 
pretty coming through on the white. Evolution advanced by We Are Memory Cube. Cut, emboss, and letterpress. Oh. Okay, I don't need to throw that into the equation right now. So many options. And, I'm, you know, at least that's one thing about getting older is that I am not instantly, I mean, I can put things in my carts in the shops, but I don't hit the pull button right away. I'm, I'm getting better about waiting on that. I think I'll leave some breathing room on this one and do something else with it. I'll do another one where we just cover the whole white with the ferns and see how that looks. These are going to give me some nice bases. And of course, because I am using printed napkins, you know, here with somebody else's design, this is not something that I can scan and sell. I can use these original papers in my own work, but I cannot scan and sell them. Uh, <clears throat> Let's see. I want to see. Grab another one of my plastic thingies. And yeah, I think the ferns will be neat. And I think I want to do one right now that's just ferns. Let's just cover this one piece of paper with just the ferns. I mean, look, that's, this is crazy. Those are, that's a huge stack of those ferns. I wish I remembered what I thought I was going to do. I don't know why I thought I needed to fussy cut all the napkins that I owned. Well, I didn't cut all of them, but I fussy cut so many of them that it's ridiculous. So I will be, <clears throat> I keep saying that, but I am going to do packets of those or I will put them in my um, in my flow journal kits it's just I know that I'm a ways away from actually doing the physical products for sale just not quite there yet on the time everything takes so much longer than I think it should you know I always think oh it's not gonna take me any amount of time to to do such and such and surprise <laughs> It looks completely different now when you see it on the white as compared to on the green. It's just so cool about the napkins as they just pick up the different <laughs> textures. And because this has the blue in it, see, I could build this up for a blue journal. Which I have not done. You know, I haven't even done my own mermaid kit yet. <clears throat> We have one fern growing mostly under the deck here. We live in redwood country and fern country, but I haven't planted any ferns because I don't water. So it's really cool to see this one fern keep growing because it's it gets a lot of fog condensation from the deck. Whoops, I forgot to put any glue underneath there so it's sliding all over the place. Uh, this is the part where Susan's hands get really gluey and I used up my two <clears throat> paper towels that I brought over oh, yeah. ah good now we'll have the sniffles <laughs> Thank you. 
Just going to keep layering these guys. Going to have to dig back into my glue tub. That's good. Use this stuff up. Patty, how are you? Uh, what have you been doing lately? <clears throat> yeah, the time warp is, is real when you're crafting, right? You look up and it's like, there went half my day. I was thinking, you know, how people, I don't know how people do it, that do lives like every day. I would run out of things to talk about, <laughs> especially now. I mean, we don't leave the house. We don't go anywhere. So not a whole lot has changed, but I guess it works as a nice gathering paint place for people. <clears throat> I can hear my phone going in the background, but. It's just going to have to wait. I forgot to put it on silent. Don't get phone calls very often, except for those wonderful little spamograms. You block one number, and then the next day it comes back someplace else. Right, that's getting to be a pain. Let's just open this one back up again. Oh, I love fairy gardens. I have collected stuff for fairy gardens, and I've got a couple places for it, but for some reason I have not gotten out to actually do the work in it. It's weed season here, so really need to, my husband's got to get out there with the weed whacker again, and we've got to hand pull some weeds in, in the places where stuff is getting kind of thick. <sighs> Do you have little fairy characters in your fairy garden? I collected um, a bunch of broken clay pots to do one of those staggered ones. And I would say that, you know, last year, probably for the last 12 months, yeah, we've done very little in the garden except for maintaining the weeds because I just have to decide that I'm ready to deal with the bunnies. Um, we have so many bunnies. And so I've just kind of been observing them this year and seeing what they what they want to eat and what they're going to leave alone. And luckily they leave some of my favorite plants alone. So there is that. But they are just destroying so much of the yard. I didn't mean to overlap quite that much, but oh well. You know, and they're very cute, but boy, are they destructive. And Zoe just doesn't care. She just ignores them. They, they actually walk down the paths together about a foot apart now. And she's just like, whatever. She will chase a gopher. She will chase a squirrel. She, of course, goes after the bees, which I'm forever getting on her about. She will chase a cat. But the bunnies... She lets live, <laughs> which makes me think maybe we can eventually get some chickens. So maybe she'll be okay with them as well. Oh, wow. Fairy statues from when you were children, you know, when the kids were little. That's neat. Terry, you are one creative lady. You do all kinds of great things. A 
Okay, I'm liking the ferns a lot, even with the blue. I wasn't sure I would like it with the blue. I mean, I would rather they didn't have the blue, but I don't know why. I have no good logic for it. Blue is an important color in the garden, the color of the sky. So I can I can go either way. I can build up the blue or I can push it to the background by building up more greens. Okay, I like this a lot. I think my big piece of poster board would be a good way to use up a lot of these ferns. Hmm, or would it? Have this big poster board. I figured they'd make good journal covers. It's a little stiffer. I might just do, since it's bright white, I might look for some of my really pretty napkins that need to be showcased on their own. We do not have ground squirrels. We have regular, well, or I don't know what they're, shoot. Ground squirrels are the ones that burrow in the ground though, right? So we don't have ground squirrels. We just have regular squirrels and they make Zoe crazy. She has not caught one yet, but she does chase them up the tree. She, we have a big oak tree in the back property and she'll, um, she'll climb halfway up the fork in the tree to chase a squirrel. She's caught a fair amount of gophers. Sometimes it goes after the gophers, even after they're dead, because we have trappers come and uh, we just can't keep up with setting the traps and collecting them ourselves. So they come out every two weeks and <clears throat> collect the traps that they've set the previous two weeks and set new traps where there's any activity. And if we don't pay attention to Zoe when she's outside, if there's a dead gopher in the trap, she will dig it up. Ah! Did not want to do that. She will dig it up and eat it. which is not a lot of fun for the rest of us because boy, she's got stinky stuff for the next week while all that stuff processes. It's not something that I want her to eat, but sometimes we just don't catch it in time. I can tell when there's a dead one in the ground because of the way she hovers over the trap area. So we try to go over and put some bricks over it so that she can't dig it up too easily. And she's not outside without us. We always go out with her. All right, I am liking these ferns a lot. And knowing me, I probably have some of these napkins that haven't even been torn apart like this still in my box. But right now it's just like trying, like last night I gathered all, I had been saving book text in all these different places. I have no idea why, but I had like six different boxes that I had book text in and all the stuff where the paper was still looking rather new and white. I just tossed all of that in my bin for making handmade paper. And then the rest of it I organized. I um, A lot of it would go into paper making still, but most of the rest of it is like, why, why did I have it in 10 places? I have no idea. Thank you so much, Pamela. Appreciate you being here. Berry jars are fun. One of the gals on my design team makes a lot of um, wine bottles with lights in them and then different decoupage techniques. She does beautiful jar or bottles, wine bottles. And I had no idea that they made um, decorative lights that you could shove in a wine bottle and then they had the little, the cork had the battery in it. So I'm kind of tempted if I could find some that had a, a remote control timer on them so I didn't have to hit every bottle. I have cobalt blue jars, bottles line my window sills in the living room. And it would be kind of cool to have all the lights come on. I have some of the twinkle lights in jars around the house and they've got a little remote control I can use to turn them on. All right, this is really pretty. I might need to do this on a thicker paper, do this on a cardstock and make a make a cover. And I don't know, maybe I will regret using the tracing or the sketch pad paper. Maybe this is too thin, but 
I think it's going to be okay. I'm trying not to stress. Life gives me enough stress on its own. I need do not need to add to it with my arting. Of course, there's so much glue on there, you can't even see where the missing holes are, but we're just going to guess. Oh, I see one right there at the edge. Let's put... really like to make sure I have all the glue down at first because it dries much better that way. But sometimes you miss a spot and you just got to come back later and <clears throat> it is what it is. Right there. Ah, and I just put glue on my napkins at the top. A little bit of glue here. So when these are like not completely dry, but mostly dry, I will put them between the sheets, these plastic sheets and under a book. So while they're still kind of damp and they tend to not stick together when I do that and it helps flatten them a little bit. Oh yeah, I like that one a lot. Oh, Terry, that's a nice idea, except that my letter is really long, is a full size um, eight and a half by 11, and those hummingbird cards are small, or you know, just postcard size. Yeah, I don't want them with the on off switch in the cork. I need to see if I can I mean, I guess I could just get the strings of lights, just get little lights and, well, no, because you need to be able to have the battery fit in that cork thing. I like that. All right, I'm not making nearly the progress I've made in other days. I like the all over ferns a lot better than the, um, than the random ferns. How are we doing on time? I have a half an hour. All right, let's see if we can use this up. Yeah, I just don't want to go around and flip them. I did discover with the remote, though, I mean, if you get one remote, most of the time um, it can turn on all your lights. With the winds that we have, I wouldn't want to have the bottles outside, and I'm kind of nervous about having too much glass outside. But I've got, I don't know, probably 40 feet of windowsill and it's all filled with my blue glass bottles. I'm gonna have to see if I can find, I don't mind paying more for it. I don't need the dollar store price if I can find one that's got the battery and the cork and a remote control. We've got lots of rechargeable batteries. Since fire season's coming up and I know we will have a lot of forced power outages probably for a longer time than we had last year. I like to have options for lighting. Right, let's move the ferns and just do some more layers. Uh, sniffles, sniffles. Got my colors mixed up. You can use any kind of glue you want, Shelby. Um, I've used Elmer's glue. I just, I mean, when you're just watering the stuff down, 
it doesn't matter because I'm, you know, when all of this is done and I've got all my various layers on it, you know, I'm going to sew over it too. So I'm not expecting this to be uh, a perfect gluing experience. There are some people that do all their napkin work with totally with glue sticks and then go back over and stitch them. Me, I'm just trying to use up whatever excess glues I have here. And napkins, using up these napkins. But I think having tones, I think I might do more where they're just um, lots of just the shades of green in the background. And then build them up. Whoops. Get a little glue underneath there. It's funny, I always think that because these napkins are so thick, it's going to sink right through to the base layer. But unless you give it a little bit of extra attention, it doesn't always happen. And again, for those of you that are late, if you do not like the wrinkles and you want flat ad adhesion of something like this, like napkins, go look at my video on how to um, glue napkins with zero wrinkles. And it will give you some other options. I must be getting tired. I'm getting even sloppier than usual, <laughs> which is saying something. Let me tell you. Uh, you found one with a timer on Amazon. Oh, Maria, can you um, email me or message me the link? I would love that since you already did the trouble of searching. Yeah, I don't want to have to take them out every night and recharge them. <laughs> if I can just, you know, swap out the rechargeable batteries, that would be cool. Oh, you did already. Thank you. <laughs> what glues are PVA? PVA is just a basic, um, like an Elmer's glue, school glue. It's just a really cheap glue. So if I'm using Elmer's, you know, to do something like this, I mix it, I still mix it down with water. Um, I have had glue bowls like this where I've got a mix of Mod Podge, Elmer's, Tacky Glue. You know, again, this is my, what I'm doing to use up the ridiculous amount of glues that I don't use anymore. Because it uses a lot of glue yet it's watered down, I don't have to feel bad about it. Because I do about um, probably two parts glue to one part water, but depending on the consistency. Um, this is really, really liquidy. And I don't mind the wrinkles either. I, you know, sometimes there have been times where I have liked to, you know, have the look of a beautiful napkin over a, a page that has no wrinkles. But for the most part, I don't care. Seems to be two hours is about it for me before my mess has made my space so small I can't work anymore. Oh, wow. I get kind of punchy after about two hours. Husband just took Zoe out for a walk. Oh, she's been waiting. She's gotten so used to now that he's working from home that on his, you know, lunch break or afternoon break, he takes her for a long walk and we have all these hills. So she's, you know, up and down the hills and they go for a couple miles and, um, she is so exhausted the rest of the day. She's just like coma dog, but she's, you know, gotten very used to it. So she's very, you know, um, in his face about it until he finally takes a break and they go. So they just took off. So she'll be a happy dog the rest of the day. And then she turns into a demon dog around dinner time. It's so funny. She just has all these different personalities. And I'm amazed at how she gets her messages across, even without being able to, to speak human. We always seem to understand.
Hi, Jeanette. I don't know if I said hello to you. The thing is, I don't use my expensive glues. Like I have book binding, binding glue, but I'm not going to use it. It's, it's not cheap. I'm not going to use that for this. I'm not going to use my art glitter glue for this because I water it down. Um, and I don't need to be worrying about, you know, I use the art glitter glue to have no, um, no warping of my papers when I glue paper to paper together. So for me, this is all about the cheap glue because the napkins are so thin and because I'm going to be building up so many layers, it just doesn't matter. Don't use your good stuff on this. But do use your good stuff. Don't do like I do. Do not hoard all your things and never use them because then pretty soon you won't know what you have anymore. It's just you'll be buried with all the stuff you've got hiding places that you, you know, you shoved it because you didn't have room for it. So you shoved it here and then you shoved it there. And um, it's very disheartening to walk into your creative space and not want to work because you can't find half the stuff that you're sure that you have or to accidentally throw things away because you thought it was something you weren't going to use anymore because you just, you know, you get overwhelmed by having so much stuff in your space. So use your stuff. Definitely use your stuff. Yeah, dogs don't hold back any secrets, that's for sure. They're like, yep, I need this. It's time to eat. Five o'clock every night. That's when dinner comes. And about 5.05, .05, if I haven't started to feed her yet, then she is giving me the German Shepherd stare down. You know, and if I'm sitting at my desk or at the on the couch, she will just come and put her head, you know, right there at eye level just about and stare at me until we get up and feed her. I think what I might do with a lot of the other ones is just do solid color backgrounds and let them uh, wait until I'm ready to do the next layer of collage over them in shades of green. So I'll do some solid colors in each of these uh, six greens. Wow. What's sad is I always think, oh, this is great. I'm using this stuff up. And then I look when I'm done with you guys and I see I still have so much left. <laughs> it's okay. Worst case scenario, I dump everything in the paper making box and summer comes and I'm just going to make a bunch of paper. Uh, let's see. The napkins make great base layers because they don't take up a lot of bulk. You don't have to feel bad about building up more layers with paint and ink. Yeah, starting to get a little punchy here. Yeah, follow you around until they get fed. <laughs> and then Zoe's got this routine where after she eats, she has to go outside immediately after she eats. And then she's got to go outside again before she will settle for the night. So depending on, on timing, with my husband's work schedule and stuff, I can feed her and then we'll go out once and then we'll all eat, you know, husband and I'll eat and then she'll go out again. And then usually that's enough for her to decide, okay, she's, she's done for the night. And then she curls up in one of her weird positions. I need something dark over here in this corner.
Yeah, well, there's a couple that are kind of closer to dry. I can show you. As much glue as I use, it does take a while. All right, what are we missing here? And this is just kind of some haphazard stuff right now. I will probably scan this layer since they're just blank colors. And then, I don't know, maybe I will just work on these layer by layer in the lives. We'll see. Depends on where my hummingbird obsession takes me next. Just hopping from, I really need to clear off works or floor space so there's more of us to, more room to walk. I'm glad Zoe is uh, an older dog and doesn't need to uh, be running around the room because otherwise we would not have the, the space for her to be able to run. I need some of this color, I think. Something, something right there, and I don't know what. Maybe the light one? Yeah. Thank you, Jeanette. No, I'm just going to leave it. Okay, let's see. Do I have time to do one more? Oh, this is weird. I just looked at my ferns, and what happened? This must have, there must have been one that wasn't glued down because there's this big open space there. That is bizarre. Did you guys not catch that when I was doing these? <laughs> That is so bizarre. Let's fix this. I've had one cat in my life, and he was pretty awesome, but I, um, I don't like dealing with litter boxes, so I will not have another cat, I don't think. And around here, you really don't want to have a cat that's outdoors because the coyotes and the mountain lions are going to grab them. It's so bizarre. I don't know how I managed to do that and not have it covered, but I did. So that one's going to be very cool. Let's see. This one's getting drier, so you can see a little bit more. So it's, you know, this is, again, just the base layer. So now I can come back over it with some sprays or paints or other collage. You know, and this is my one that, that was already dry. So it's similar to that. Did not get quite as many done as I thought I might. I ambitiously brought out a whole bunch of my little paper things. Let me see if I can do one more of the ferns. And this time... my glue stick. Ah, did I bury my glue stick? I did. <laughs> Susie, that is too funny. <laughs> yeah, cats definitely let you know what they're thinking. Wow. The one cat I did have um, 
we went on our honeymoon and I'd had him for a few years before uh, we moved in with my husband and, you know, we'd moved in before we got married and he was, he was fine. And he, you know, he got along great with my dog and they were best buddies, but we went on our honeymoon. We were gone for a week and he was totally happy to see us. He was fine when we got home. And then that first night he peed all over everything in the closet. It was like, okay, I just want you to know what I think about you being gone. Don't do that again. Lost a lot of clothes. My favorite boots. <laughs> I'm trying this one with a glue stick because I'm thinking maybe I won't tend to overlap quite so much because I can see a little better. I love other people's cats. I love to cuddle with a cat. My cat would need, need my stomach all the time. <laughs> now, this is just really cheap sketch pad paper. Very, you know, it warps as soon as I put the wet stuff on it. But again, because it's not going to be a, a cover on its own, it's just going to be a, a base layer for other stuff, and I'm going to sew on it. I'm not worried about all the warpage that's happening because I discovered <laughs> what a surprise. I discovered um, so many of these sketch pads. I should probably make some, just some simple journals where I can just use this paper to fill the journal. Yeah. These ferns are really pretty. Now I'm going to have to, after this live, I'm going to have to go look and see if I have some that I, of the same napkin that I haven't cut apart. Or torn apart is what it looks like I did. I can already imagine a lot of things that I want to do with this one. But because these are um, napkins, printed napkins, of course, I will not be able to scan and sell anything like these. Oh, Patty, how lovely. Enjoy. I got to get out there and pick um, some of my leaves that are new while well, they're fresh and young because I love to pick them at that stage. Have a great afternoon. And you are planting veggies. Yeah, we need to fence. We need to fence an area so that I can get vegetables in. I can't do that this year with those bunnies. What I would like to do is just block them out of the upper front yard because that's where the most sun is anyways. And it's a smaller area, so it's not an area that Zoe runs in. I mean, she can hang out in, but she doesn't run in. But our fencing is all um, the wire fence with like the four inch holes. So these bunnies just pop right through it. <clears throat> so maybe, maybe we can get out there and get the base of the fences blocked. And if that's the case, then at least I can plant edibles in the front yard and then let the bunnies have, you know, the backyard. And they don't eat everything which has kind of been interesting to watch what they do and don't eat. One of my favorite flowers is our California native uh, monkey flower, and they don't eat those, so that's good. And they don't eat my coyote mint, which is another one of my favorites. So there are things that we can plant in the lower yard, but other things like my island snapdragon, which is something my hummingbirds absolutely love, with this, and it's a native plant, and it's got these big, beautiful red um flowers that are perfect for the hummingbirds you know with the the trumpet shape and the bunnies just absolutely take it to the ground so some of it i have in pots on the deck and they still they come up on the deck and hop in the pots and eat it so a couple of them i finally gotten blocked enough that the bunnies can't get to and they're starting to grow but geez Yeah, my mother-in-law has bunnies that dig under her fence. And every time they find a hole, then they fill the hole with cement. And they're hoping eventually 
but I mean, our, our actual fence is uh, six feet tall. So it's to keep the deer out. So they, the bunnies can't jump that, but they do go right through the holes in the wire. So we're going to have to block that up and we're not super handy ourselves, but we're going to have to get better at it. Cause I'm, I'm not really feeling great about having workers come to the house yet, which is too bad because we've got a lot of the renovations are not done yet, but uh, we're just going to have to, I don't know. I'm just not, I'm not comfortable enough yet to let people, I mean, I'm okay with them working outside, but you know, then to have to tell them, you know, I really don't want you coming in the house to use the bathroom. That makes me nervous. Almost, and then I'll put the glue, top glue on this. Hide animal feces in the mist of leaves, Jeanette, for what? For the bunnies? They don't seem to care. <laughs> bunnies go everywhere. And it just cracks me up to watch them, you know, I'll see them peeking out of the bushes when Zoe's outside and you know, they'll walk by Zoe will walk by and they just pop out of the bushes and follow her wherever she's going. She goes one way, they go the other way. The only time she ever even jumps after them is if she's not expecting one and it just pops out of a bush and surprises her. All right. This did let me go. I think a little faster. Although getting the glue down on top of all those edges might be a little bit of a challenge, but I'm up for it. I'm up for the challenge. Yes, and we need just a little something there. Okay. Uh, that seems to be good. All right, one more. Oh, that, that would be scary, Nettie. I would not want that to happen. My bunnies live under our deck. They've got their den under there, so they are pretty safe. But um, from, well, we don't have any lawn to mow, so we just, we go out with the weed whacker, but uh, where they tend to hang out is not a place that we whack because they hang out in the plants that I actually like. But they um, they live and give birth under the deck. Oh, the latest little bunnies are still learning the yard, which is really kind of cute to see the babies come in because our bunnies are small. Um, shoot, I, they're brush rabbits and they are very small. So then the, the babies are really tiny. Could have done a better job. See, I get to the end of this and then I'm like, okay, I'm so over gluing napkins. I don't want to do this anymore. That's why I bounce from project to project. It's like, I'm tired of this, but I'm so happy with all the room I'm finding in the studio. And it's funny, my the magazine images that I packaged up, um, they filled a, an office supply box of, you know, like if you had, what is it, 10 reams of paper in it. So I had one of those big paper boxes and that complete, all my images loose filled that. And which doesn't seem like that much space, but in the studio, they were all stored in these boxes with lids on them. And, you know, so they didn't, they took up more space to store. So I think that's where I gained a whole bunch of room. I'm kind of excited now after doing this and these guys dry is to, to go in there and see um, what else I can put away. I was really hoping I was going to find the top of the island soon. Yeah, Terry, that's exactly the idea we had is to do, um, well, it has to be uh, small holes, you know, very fine mesh. And I was just going to go out there with zip ties and attach it. We just have, I want to do it before things get too much brighter or too much, um, you know, where things are growing too much more. Shoot. Because otherwise it's going to be too thick to get back in there and. We also have to be careful because um, 
you be in there really thick with all the plants and we have so many ticks. Ugh. The one advantage of a white dog is you do see all the ticks when they come in, when she comes in the house. But man, okay, this one's really going to be wrinkled. Wrinkled ferns, old wrinkled ferns. That is the hassle about doing it with the glue stick. It saves time on one end and not on the other. Oh, well. It's all good, right? I keep reminding myself. My perfectionist has been retired. Mostly. She pops in every once in a while and I tell her to take a hike. Because she's got attitude. And there's no room for attitude anymore in my life. My life needs to be calm, zen. I wish I could meditate. I don't meditate very well. I've tried. So I just try to uh, not think about the things that are stressing me out. I know that's easier said than done, right? But I, uh, I'm a believer that your brain can only hold one thought at a time. So if I'm thinking the icky stuff, then I try to you know, I think Zoe, squirrels, bunnies, and start thinking about other stuff or projects I want to work on. Because for a while, everything was kind of negative in my life. And it was not a happy place to live and to not make me a happy person to be around. And I don't want to be that person. And my perfectionist person, you know, she can bring that out because then suddenly, you know, start playing the compare game. Oh, this person just worked on the same, a similar project. And oh, wow, it came out so fantastic. And mine doesn't look like that. Well, of course it doesn't. All our stuff's going to look different. It's what um, makes us unique. Boy, I'm making a mess of this one. Good thing this is the last one. You know, we want to embrace our differences. Wow, Susan, you should stop. <laughs> Only because I'm going to get frustrated. Yeah, I should have glued them down a little bit better with the glue sticks. Yeah, it's because I get so impatient. It's just going to make more wrinkles, and that's okay. That'll be more places to age it. Chicken wire. It depends on um, if it's that hexagon stuff that's... Uh, where the, the holes are only a couple inches wide, it would be okay. I Right now, my holes are about four inches wide, and that's too big for them. These guys are, they, they just can, you know, they're mostly fluff, so they just, they just slough in. Well, ticks may not like vinegar, but there isn't like vinegar around in the yard. So what happens is, Zoe, we have a lot of um, native grasses because they're good for the wildlife. And, you know, the ticks just love the grasses. So she walks by and brushes against the grasses and the ticks are on her. So it's just become a thing. When she comes in the house, we sit down and pick all the ticks off her. I have a little jar that I keep on the counter all the time. And it's just filled with water with, you know, I add some soap to it because the soap film, then, you, you know, when you pick the ticks off and they're still alive and you just drop them in there and they die. We've only had one that embedded itself that we didn't catch in time. And she's on tick medication, so I'm not as worried. I mean, I know they will die, but I don't want them deciding to jump from her to me or my husband. Okay, I do not recommend doing the glue sticks when you're working on the little, little pieces like that, or if you're going to do it, cover it more, because I'm going to have to go back over this one. I did not do a good job on it. Okay, Susan, it is okay. The glue's not soaking through here enough to get to that base layer. So we're just going to wrinkle it up some more. Uh, did not get to the edges. See if I have any missed spots on this one. Coverage looks pretty good. Ah, here comes a tired Zoe back. Yep. Missed some glue there. 
yeah, you can't even really tell that it's ferns right now with all this glue on it. I know I used way too much glue. It is what it is. That would have been the squeaky front door. Okay, let's see what the other one looks like. Uh, wherever I put it. Okay, so the glue is drying a little bit more on this one. You can see it's going to look a little better. I think that is going to do it for me. Oops, I already got dog hair on it. I'm going to let these guys dry, and then I will put them under some books to get them a little flatter. And then next week we will do the next layer on them. Oh, thanks, Erin. That's great. I appreciate you giving the call out for the thumbs up. They always make me smile. Shelby, see you later. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for hanging out with me while I work today. And I will see you next Wednesday at noon, my California time. Bye for now.